Ports of Auckland has had a torrid past few months with increasing pressure from importers and retailers to speed up stock movement through the port. The company insists the delays are due to staff shortages, despite workers telling Checkpoint the move to automated straddle carriers to shift containers is to blame. So Checkpoint wanted to see these new robot carriers in action. We sent reporter Nick Truebridge and cameraman Nick Monroe for a morning on the wharves. This is one of Auckland's shiny new toys, a 16-metre, 70-tonne robot known as a straddle carrier that finds its way around these docks on its own. It magically locates the back of a truck and gets itself into position, ready to drop a container of supplies so they can be delivered to retailers desperate to get their shelves stocked in time for the holiday rush. A wharfie equipped with controls slightly more sophisticated than your standard PlayStation controller takes over, pinpointing the truck trailer, dropping the load and giving the driver the all clear. These are the sort of technological advancements that would usually be a PR dream for a company like Ports of Auckland. Instead, the headlines have been less than glowing. Import delays force Christmas shopping squeeze for retailers. Importers demand answers over delays at ports. Another setback at Auckland Port over automation floor. There's no doubt Ports of Auckland is under pressure. Christmas is coming and the snarl up has importers and retailers worried they won't have sufficient stock to service customers' wish lists. We all live and shop here in Auckland uh, and, and we, we understand and feel the, the problems acutely. That's Ross Clark, the man overseeing a massive change at Auckland's port. And it's this shift to a robotic future that some who work these wharves claim is behind delays shifting freight. Behind me you can see the port's yellow manual straddle carriers working the truck grid. But they've slowly moved to these guys. These are 16 metre automated straddle carriers. The port company hails its automated straddle carriers as a new capacity-boosting, sustainable way of operating. Critics, on the other hand, believe manual operations would better clear a backlog which has some ships waiting nearly two weeks to berth after arriving in the Hauraki Gulf. Despite all that, Ross Clark, who's Ports of Auckland's automation project manager, is adamant the project is not to blame. The automation system is working pretty much uh, as we had expected. Uh, it's, it's not the cause of the uh, delays that are being experienced. Um, that really is down to uh, our shortage of operational staff. He concedes, however, a slip-up on Sunday did not help. One of the 70-tonne robotic straddle carriers went rogue, hitting a retaining wall before coming to a stop. Obviously, we're disappointed with the incident that occurred on Sunday, uh, and... Um, uh, we would very much prefer that those sorts of things didn't happen. That incident, which has left one of these new robots with a few prominent white scrape marks, suspended automation completely. Well, we had to halt operations for a while, uh, ex ask our supplier to analyse the root cause of the incident uh, and then uh, uh, receive a report from them uh, as to how they would rectify that. And, uh, and then implement that fix. Uh, then of course we test uh, to ensure that the fix uh, does resolve the problem. And then of course we need to regain the trust of our people uh, and, uh, and demonstrate to them that again the core safety functionality of the system was, was not compromised in any way at all. Mr Clark says the automatic machines are now back up and running. The next milestone is to complete the automation project. At the moment, the port is operating in a half-to-half -half fashion, with the old manual straddle carriers still crucial to shifting freight. The port's blaming staffing issues for delays in processing freight once it's arrived. General Manager of Communications Matt Ball told Checkpoint last month Ports of Auckland had been short about 30 staff in the past few years, but with COVID-19 making the situation worse, they are now in need of another 50 staff. Today we asked Mr Ball, who admits the port is overwhelmed, how that recruitment drive is going. Despite it being a hard labour market, we are actually making reasonable progress. Uh, we've got a skilled crane operator who started work this week and we've got some former straddle drivers from Ports of Auckland who've come back to work for us and we'll just keep plugging on with us. You know, we'll get, a, get through the training, um, but we're looking for more people and if anyone out there is looking for a job, it's a great place to work. 
Meanwhile, some shipping companies have started diverting to Tauranga or Northland instead of dealing with the snarl up in Auckland. Mr Ball concedes that's not a good look. No, we're gutted. Like, normally every year when you get a busy peak season, we're the port that sped the ships up, that got them back on their timetable. So for us not to be able to do that this year is really gutting. And we are working as hard as we can to get back to that position where we are the most productive port and we're pushing the ships through again. We will do it. It is going to take us a bit of time, but we're going to get there. For now though, with a waning workforce and questions hanging over its new machinery, the port faces a race against time to help get gifts under the tree on Christmas morning. For Checkpoint, Nick Truebridge.